In this section, you will hear a conversation between an employer and an applicant discussing a job opportunity at the Wild Dunes Spa and Resort. First, you have half a minute to look at questions 110. Now listen and answer questions 110. Hello, is this John Murphy? Yes, it is. Hi, this is Ed Heisenberg from the Wild Dunes Spa and Resort. I'm calling about your application for our lifeguard position. Do you have a few minutes to talk? Yes, absolutely. Great. Could you give me your address? Sure, my address is 45 Elsinore Court. I'm sorry. Could you spell that for me? It's Elsinore, E-L-S-I-N-O-R-E. -E. Okay, thanks. And is this the number we should reach you at in the future? 0998857667? No, this is my home phone, but let me give you my mobile phone number instead, 0778962456245. Please call me on that one. Okay, I'll make a note of that. Could you tell me your availability? I'm usually available during afternoons or weekends, but I would prefer not to be scheduled on weeknights since I work part-time as a waiter. That shouldn't be a problem, since we don't stay open very late. And do you have any other employment experience? Yes. I was the baseball coach at Ridgemont High School last season, and I also worked as a rescue diver at the beach last year. Rescue diver? That sounds intense. Tell me more about your relevant skills. I'm CPR certified and have two years of diving experience. My CPR certification expires in October. Great. It sounds like you're well qualified. When would be your ideal time to work? Since I work at the restaurant on weeknights, I like weekends best, specifically Saturday mornings. I can be there by 6 o'clock a.m. We have a lot of staff on Saturdays, but I do need an early morning lifeguard. I'll put you down for Saturday mornings. Awesome, I can't wait to get started. How about you come in next Saturday, the 12th? That sounds good. Great, we'll figure out other shifts then. One last thing, where did you hear about us? I heard your ad on the radio while driving this morning. Interesting, you're the first person who's responded to our radio ads. Most people find us through the newspaper. Yeah, I don't have time to read the newspaper every morning, but I do have plenty of time in the car to listen to radio ads. That makes sense. Well, thanks for your time, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the 12th death. That's the end of part one. You have half a minute to check your answers. In this section, you will listen to an informative presentation discussing campus safety. First, you will have time to look at questions 11 to 20. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 20. Good evening, everyone. Today, I will provide an overview of the safety situation on our university campus. As a long-serving police officer in Nottingham, I have valuable insights to share about the types of crimes that occur here and how you can stay safe. First, it's important to understand that the nature of crime on our campus is quite different from the surrounding areas. While issues like drugs and violence may be more prevalent in the city, the biggest concern for us on campus is theft. We've seen an increase in crime rates across the East Midlands over the past few years, but I'm happy to report that the overall campus crime rate has actually fallen this year, contrary to the exaggerated media coverage.
When it comes to dealing with crime, the best advice is to avoid getting directly involved if possible. If you ever find yourself in a situation like a mugging, it's crucial to remain compliant and seek help afterwards, rather than trying to resist. While such incidents are highly unlikely, it's important to be prepared and aware of your surroundings, especially when walking alone at night. To enhance your safety, I recommend always having your mobile phone with you, but be mindful of using it in public, as it can make you a target for thieves. If you do need to walk home late at night, try to do so with a friend or coworker. The university also offers free self-defense classes, which can help you feel more empowered and aware of potential dangers. Overall, the campus is generally a safe place, but it's not immune to occasional small crimes. By staying vigilant, using common sense precautions, and taking advantage of the resources available, you can help maintain a secure environment for everyone. Thank you for your time, and please let me know if you have any other questions. That's the end of part two. You have half a minute to check your answers. In this section, you will hear a conversation between a tutor and a student discussing the student's research project. First, you have half a minute to look at questions 21-23. Now listen and answer questions 21 to 23. Hello, please have a seat. Tell me about the project you've chosen to work on. I've decided to research the key factors for success on a football team. That's a great topic. Can you tell me more about the guidelines for this assignment? Yes, the instructions were provided in a handout. It says the first draft is due at the end of next week, and we have to submit two more drafts later in the month. I see. Why do you think the teacher is asking for multiple revisions? I'm not sure why we have to keep revising it. Is this assignment really that important? Absolutely. This project is a major requirement for passing 11th grade English and will be part of your permanent record. Wow. I didn't realize it was that significant. Does this mean it will affect which English class I'm placed in next year? Not necessarily. Your overall grade and your teacher's recommendation will determine your English placement, not just this one assignment. Now, tell me, do you have a personal connection to the topic of football? Yes, my father is a big fan of the sport and watches it every weekend. That's why I chose to research it. Great. It's always helpful to work on a topic you're genuinely interested in. Let's discuss your plan for this project in more detail. Before listening to the rest of the conversation, you have half a minute to look at questions 24 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 24 to 30. I see you've done a lot of work contacting players and the head coach to gather information. Let's take a look at what you found. Well, the first recording is a bit tricky to make out because the background noise is overpowering the speaker's voice. It's hard to hear their full response. I agree. That's a challenge. And the player's answer seems a bit too brief. You'll need to follow up with them and try to get a more detailed response. Okay, I'll make sure to call them again tomorrow and get them to expand on their answer. Moving forward, the question you asked about a time when the players learned a major life lesson through football and how that has shaped them is a great idea. 
but it's quite complex for an oral interview. I'd suggest breaking it down into smaller, more focused questions. I am I are. You're right. That's a lot to ask someone to answer all at once. I noticed the players struggled to give a complete response to that. In fact, that was the question Joe Billings was answering when the recording cut out. Ah, yes. He did tend to go on a bit, didn't he? He sure did. For your next round of interviews, I'd recommend using a higher quality recording device. The spotty audio on this recording indicates your equipment wasn't working perfectly. Okay, using my phone's voice recorder probably wasn't the best choice. Can you give me some feedback on the content and structure of the report itself? Certainly. Your focus on football is interesting, but the topic seems a bit broad. What's the central thesis or conclusion you're trying to draw from your research? I'd suggest developing a clear, focused thesis statement to guide the structure of your report. I included a lot of specific facts, like the top goal scorers and coaches' records. Isn't that helpful? Instructor, those facts are great, but you may have gotten a bit bogged down in the details. Try to use those facts to support a central argument or point you're making. I see. So I need to work on connecting the details to a stronger overall argument. Looks like I've got some revisions to make before the deadline. Exactly. But with some focused revisions, I think you can turn this into a really strong report. That's the end of part three. You have half a minute to check your answers. In this section, you will listen to an assistant discussing the key points for delivering a quality speech. First, you will have time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning. Today, I will cover the important task of giving an effective speech, a thought that often makes people feel nervous. In fact, a vast majority of individuals experience anxiety about public speaking, with around 10% being genuinely terrified. Hopefully, by the end of this discussion, hopefully, by the end of this discussion, you will feel more confident and less nervous about speaking in front of an audience. Did you know that speakers tend to feel more anxious when the speech they are delivering is particularly significant? It makes sense, as you would likely be less nervous addressing a small group about a routine matter than giving a graduation speech to your entire class. Some people believe that the ability to give a great speech is a natural talent that some are simply born with. However, this is rarely the case. Public speaking is a skill that can be developed through practice. The first and most important step to improve your confidence in delivering a speech is to prepare a well-crafted speech. While the content is important, the audience will primarily remember the final point you make. It's a good idea to structure your speech to build up to this key message, ensuring your speech is well-organized. Once you are confident in the quality of your speech, the next step is to focus on your stage presence. Let's discuss some do's and don'ts of public speaking. First. You want to capture the audience's attention. Do not proceed with your speech until you have their undivided focus. Even the most impactful speech, like Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream, would not have been as effective without the audience's complete attention. Continuing with the MLK example, one of the reasons he was such an effective orator was his ability to speak with passion and engage the audience. This charisma does not come from simply reading from a script. It's a good idea to have some notes or key points written down, but reading your entire speech verbatim will result in a boring and forgettable delivery. You want to maintain eye contact with the audience and convey the emotions behind your ideas. I suggest writing down one or two main ideas, so if you momentarily draw a blank, you have something to refer to and get back on track. Once you have your key points, practice your speech in front of a mirror, record yourself, or rehearse with a friend. 
This will allow you to hear how the ideas come across, ensure the transitions are smooth, and check your pacing. Timing is crucial, so be sure to time your practice runs. In conclusion, with practice, you'll be able to deliver an engaging and inspiring speech. Remember to speak with emotion and avoid simply reading from a script. I've put these tips into practice during this very discussion. You can see I have a small index card with just a few bullet points to guide me. It really is that straightforward. That is the end of part four. You'll now have half a minute to check your answers.